everyone, Frank here. Glad you could join us this week. We have a very special show lined up for you, and it is the very, very best of Antioch's. Um, so we did quite a few different shows there, and we've been there multiple times with different people. A very tough place to get into. We just did an excellent job videoing this and, uh, and doing all the editing, a week of editing. This is the best show I've ever produced. So if you like it, please share it uh, you know, to your social networks. We'd like to, as many people to see it as possible. Um, uh, so we started off uh, just kind of exploring the town site and it was a lot of work to get further and further into the mine. All the entrances were blasted shut in a steep remote location, but uh, well worth the effort. So I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. So going forward, um, we have just had a really good year this year so far. We've met some interesting people and uh, did some filming with them. And we'd like to continue doing that. So we're done haying for this year. So we want to do some more extended trips into a Sandon and uh, into Trout Lake. I don't have anyone to go with me. Um, so would, uh, if any of you people out there would like to join me, doesn't matter if you're single, uh, a couple, male, female, or whatever. Um, if you're interested in, in, uh, in exploring some mines and getting involved in the production a little, we'd love to have some company. And uh, hopefully we'll bring you some really, uh, really cool shows later this fall. Welcome to Antioch's. We're flying along Hidden Creek, and uh, Hidden Creek is uh, discharged from the mines, and we're heading to the ocean. It's low tide right now, and this is where they uh, loaded up all the ships with the copper. And uh, we're kind of right in the area of the smelter. There's uh, quite a few stacks, big stacks still standing there. This is a huge stack. I think it was about 24 feet across, and that's where all the um, where the smoke came from the smelters. It was the largest uh, smelter in the British Commonwealth. Now there's hardly been anyone in Annex, Antioch for many years, but uh, lately there's been some filmmakers and stuff. Um, but So we're just going to show you a little bit on, the, on what's still there on the outside. But our main reason for going here is to go inside the mine. And there's nobody been inside the mine since the mine was shut down in uh, 1935. They blasted all, everything uh, shut, all the entrances shut. And uh, we we're able to get in there and we're going to show you what it looks like. The only way to get to Antioch is by water or by air. There's no uh, road or rail or anything like that. It's uh, completely cut off. And it's a uh, 60 mile boat trip to get up into Antioch. Once you get there, this is the only vehicle that, uh, the only truck that's there was brought up by barge and uh, we're able to use that truck to get around to the mine and stuff. And uh, so this is just showing you some stuff that's outside. This was the big general store. It was a huge general store and look at all the the wharfs and stuff, um, that was all completely, it was all wharfs in there at one time. It's all kind of broken down. Lots of wildlife. They've seen a lot of bears. And um, this is the iconic powerhouse. Everyone goes up there and takes pictures of it. And uh, it's uh, just actually kind of amazing. It was a real state-of-the-art powerhouse. It's generated most of the power. We'll show you the dam in a bit. It's uh, generated most of the power from uh, Antioch to, to run the smelters. Uh, they also had to have a steam plant uh, because they uh, couldn't actually generate enough power in the winter uh, because just the water flows were, uh, were quite a bit less. I think there's about a thousand foot drop to the dam to here, so it was a pretty good place to build power, but just not really enough water for what they needed. Now, it was very tough getting around through the bush here and finding all these places. There's all kinds of buildings in the middle of nowhere that you wouldn't expect to see there. It's really overgrown. The jungle's taken everything back. Um, so we hiked around there and just kind of thought we'd show you some of these buildings. There's lots and lots of buildings. Most everything, uh, you know, they had a big fire in 1943 and everything wooden was burned then. So what's left is all just the concrete, steel, the brick and these huge towers. Um, there's three of them still standing. There was another one that fell. And it's, uh, they're just huge. Uh, this is a big surge tank that actually uh, would reduce the, the pressure from the dam if the spillway had to be shut down all of a sudden. And uh, the town is all laid out there. There's 3,000 people there, and you see fire hydrants in the middle of nowhere where you'd never expect them. And it was a very modern town in every respect. They had uh, cold and hot running water, heat, everything in each, uh, in each house, bunk houses and stuff. And here, see, this is just a building that's just, uh, you know, just the steel is left and a lot of wood burnt from here. And just this kind of skeleton still standing. And we're in the this is actually the stack, or just below the stack from the smelter to the stack. And uh, so that's where all the, the flue glass and stuff went along there. To the, you know, the, to, and the reason they have the big stacks is because the higher it is, hot air rising is quite high, it, uh, it, it makes a tremendous amount of draw. So that really gets those furnaces hot. So the higher the stack is, um, the more draw there is and the more oxygen that's sucked into the, into the um, smelter and the hotter it is. 
And uh, they also made their own bricks. So this is a big kiln they had there. And those are all brand new bricks that are in this big furnace being cured. And uh, so modern day, this is what we have here today. So um, they're mining slag here. So they've been doing that for 30 years. And that's the only people that live there. Um, True Grid Abrasives owns it. And uh, so they have a barge there. And, uh, and they uh, live on the barge. And we actually were to stay there. And uh, so a big barge uh, tugboat comes in, brings in a big barge, and they load up uh, slag, and they use it for uh, roofing material, and they put it in concrete and some other industrial uses. So uh, about every month or so, they, uh, they get the crew in there, and they uh, run those loaders to, uh, for about 18 hours, and then they start loading this, uh, this big barge up, and the tug comes in, and that's uh, uh, the only this thing that's going on in the Antiochs. And, yeah, you also see some buildings and stuff, and uh, around 2004, they decided they wanted to build the old dam back up. So there was a camp from that, and but it's all abandoned now, and there's nobody doing anything there. So here's the dam. We'll show you the dam. We're looking at the dam, and it's just really amazing just how big it is. There's stairs and stuff that went down here, and, and, uh, and the spillworks and stuff here. I'm going to climb up on top, and, and you'll really be amazed. I'll just be like a little ant on the top of this dam here. It's a really big dam. taking the, the highway up to the mine today and this is the easiest way to get up to the mine and we're lucky actually there's not very much water here it doesn't rain here so the easiest way to get up to the mine is just walk through this big creek bed having the drone along was just a huge help for us to get up there and actually find out where all these adits are you know because everything was blasted shut and it's such a huge mine it's really tough getting around and uh, seeing where a guy could get in so that really kind of helped us out and got some pretty cool footage out of it too pit there you can see some of these grayish streaks there i think it's either silver or lead or a combination of those two that seems to be really rich in ore in there so this face here has got uh, the most adits there's a whole bunch of cross cut adits in there and we couldn't get up we couldn't get in any of those that we're looking at there uh, we tried from the bottom and we couldn't get up and we didn't see anything from the top going down and the problem this is really steep and it's really loose and it's actually overhanging so really challenging to get in there yeah, we, you know, looking from the top of the pit, you're thinking, well, there's no way to get down there, really, unless you take a rope and go down hundreds of feet of vertical walls. But we found a way to get into the bottom of the mine. And there isn't very many ways to get into this. It's the only one that I know of, and it's almost collapsed. There we go. We're just kind of having a look at this stope and just look at how massive this thing is. And I can just wait for Kevin to catch up with me here. A bit of a hike to get around here. But it's a difficult place to get into, but we found the key and we're on the right track here now. So. Look at that overhang and stuff in there. Another possibility of coming down in through there, which we weren't really looking forward to too much, but one long slip in there. Really one of the big massive ore There's a bit of rope in there, down that hole. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up. And this one. Well, let's go up there and see what Frank's up to. When you say not steep, Frank, uh, it still might concern me, right? So all we're seeing so far is, um, so this material is all ore here, so we're seeing a bunch of holes around here and then they just would have went straight down to the main hall level, so we're not seeing any cross cuts yet. But we'll get in the right one, and then we're going to see tunnels going into the into the rock. I imagine. So there's all kinds of little little holes that have been. So we're going to head up into that one and just see if we can get further up here. <laughs> looks pretty cool. It almost looks like a a fossil in there. I don't know if it is or not, but. Interesting looking formation all the same. 
Well, that's a quite a bit lower that stope there. Look at the crosscut levels looking all the way up there. And we saw this from the top yesterday. Yeah, well, we're hoping to get in the kind of major crosscut here. And I think we're getting closer to finding one. Yeah. Sure dug a lot of material out of here, eh? And this is only a very small portion of this. Frank went up there to try to see if he could go across to the, hopefully get into one of these tunnels, but it's really not looking like it. Because it's way too angular. Oh. We were trying to get over to right about there. Doesn't look like it's a no, it's a no go. That's where we were down in. Down in that big stope down in there. It's pretty darn steep there. I can hear rocks coming down all the time while he's trying to get down. Everything's fairly angular here, you might say. And very rarely are the angles in your favor. So my plan here was uh, to uh, climb up here and it looked like there was a ledge from the bottom where I could get across, but as you can see, it's uh, there is no ledge, it's just really steep, or not enough of a ledge. <laughs> kind of nasty climbing up here as it is, so. Yeah, so that was not gonna work. And unfortunately, there's all kinds of cool cross-cut levels, but we ain't figured out how to get in to any of them. Hopefully we can find a ladder or something that goes up there, because there's got to be some way for the miners to have gotten from the different levels. We haven't figured out how they got. We haven't seen a, a ladder or a manway or anything yet, so we'll look around and see if we can find one. This is kind of cool, all this crystallization on the rock since it's been opened up. This is some pretty ugly rock up here. It's completely fractured and hanging up over top of an old ore pass here. Looks kind of steep to me. A steel handle or something. That's what I saw this. Like a calcium type of a. Yeah. That one's pretty nice too. Take a sample here. Yeah, this ledge is fine to go up there till there. Problem is that stuff's all really crumbly up there. Just a little too nasty. Not much, just a little. And I can't safely get around there. Now, if you make one misstep, I'm done. I'm dead. You know, just a step or two from from making it, but huh, you know, that one step too far is what kill you. So we're gonna call this a slusher at it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look real steep, but we definitely need a rope to go down there. I'm just going to sneak down there and uh, and see if there's a level fairly close, we hope. And uh, this is what I climbed down. It, it's not really that steep because I have an ascender with me. Uh, this part's not bad, but it gets a lot steeper. And if I had my proper rigging with me, it wouldn't be a problem, but since I don't... And you always try to decide what the hell to bring with you because everything weighs a lot and... Uh, um, all of a sudden I'm faced to be in here without uh, what I really need to get down here, so. Frank's heading back up right now. We're hearing a, lot, hearing a lot of water on the bottom. Quite a few feet under where he made it. And it's getting steeper and more treacherous, so. It ain't an easy place to get in and out of. If you get hurt here, your probably shock will get you before the medevac. 
Frank's walking the ridge back in between the two big open stopes there. One down and there. And you're never really going to catch yourself if you stop, start slipping down there. Do you want me to roll that rock? Yeah, go ahead. Oh boy. Yeah, she's going to go right down to the pit. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> there are rocks flying all over the fucking place here. <laughs> oh, I don't want to work at the bottom end near the... <laughs> Where the hell is he now? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's got a big one now. Yeah, it looked pretty cool from here. What are we gonna do now, Frank? Oh, I gotta take out my, uh... Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Yeah, maybe I should take my iPad and get a position of where we are here. And, uh... Oh, there's a hole there, and there's a bunch of holes there, so... Maybe we'll check out some holes. Pretty colorful in here. Lots of sulfides. Tracks you're seeing here of mine. I was here the other day. But I didn't have my camera, so I didn't go very far up because I knew I was gonna have to come back and film this because it just keeps going up further and further. Really quite colorful in here. Well, that's not going anywhere, eh? No, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It's just a beautiful picture looking out. Yeah, so we're just sitting around with a little smoke here. Not me. Well, yeah, me because all the smoke's coming down. <laughs> and there it goes up the hole. Yeah, so we're going to continue on this other trail that goes up also. We've got a dynamite box here. And the paper is still in good shape here. Well, there might be some dynamite in here. Yeah, the paper's still here. Polar Foresight Johnson. Grandma must have had a hell of a deal on that because we should have seen a lot of that. <laughs> oh, look at that color of that. Oh, isn't that cool? Oh. Ooh. Goes down, but you ain't getting down there. That's nice. All right, so we're uh, standing in front of a crusher at it here. Uh, soaking wet as per usual. It's rained every day since I've been here. Very humid here, so when you're walking through the jungle, it, uh, you just get wet from all the stuff. Soaked all the time, sweat, humidity. It's all fun though, I guess. So we're gonna put a climbing rig on, and the plan is to go inside the crusher. We wanna go down below the crusher where the ore goes down and see if we can get to the level where the trains load the ore out, it's probably going to be flooded, but it's worth a try, so we'll see how we make out. Alright, so now we put a nice uh, dry shirt on, taking our, some more wet clothes off, and got our climbing rigging on, and we're going to go into the to the mine. Huge crusher here, I don't know how high it is, it, it's huge, it's a massive crusher. Um, and what they did is they crushed the rock, the oversized rock, and then they sent it down to the 150 level, which is the, the main level where the trains um, hauled all the ore out of the mine. So uh, the bottom of the 150 level is plugged off. There's water running out of there, but it's plugged off. You can't get in that way. So the plan is to go down one of these ore passes and see if we can access the 150 level. It's probably going to be flooded, but what the hell, we'll give it a try anyways and we'll see what we can find. And lots of cold air blowing out here. Now, there's a, a bunch of things going on here. There's a, a number of levels going down and that's um, stuff that bypassed the crusher that just went straight to the the rail bed below us And we're going to show you this crusher. It's a monster crusher and it was actually uh, assembled right in the mine here And they left her right where they sat where she's sitting 
when the mine shut down because uh, oh, it's just way too much work to move. As you'll see, it's about four stories tall. So the motor would have been relatively easy to take out. You know, the crusher, huh, virtually impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew there was a big crusher here. I think so. This is the crusher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see what's left of belting or, yep. or guards off of these big wheels. This is the crusher they were talking about that's in yeah. here. Well, there's just a massive... We know what this is here. It looks like a huge winch. Look at the size of those nuts right there on the back side. Holy... You ever see a nut that big? No, no, no. <laughs> Not for a bit. No, those nuts must be like... That's... Th this is a shape... Uh, or box. So how do you like that for a freaking big wrench? Strength found a little wrench <laughs> there. Must be for tightening the shaker box. So this wrench would have torqued these bolts, I guess. <laughs> I think I got this. Oh, yeah. Good thing I got steel those boots because that freaking thing drops. Yeah. That wrench is the bolts. Don't fit too good, it's a little rusty. <laughs> An old style grease gun, yeah. Focus. It's a big machine, eh? Yeah. But look down in here, I think. I don't know where. Those stairs would be like. I'm betting the stairs are scary. Yeah, they're smaller. Threads, so. Well, this is a little higher up, I guess. So, we're seeing lots of interesting stuff here. And this is very well constructed. Uh, this is the top part of the crusher. This is all the floor and stuff, the big rotten stuff that's up there. And uh, we were up there and did a little bit of filming there. Um, that's where that big nut was. And then this is the bottom part of it. So you see, it's pretty big, opera. pretty big machine. It goes all the way, see, goes all the way up to that very top level there. That's the ceiling of the top part of the crusher. And there's a big crane up there. That, Kevin filmed, and uh, this is the bottom part of the crusher. So a lot of this stuff is falling off of here. It's rotted and falling off the infrastructure. There's a, those rotten stairs going up there. And look at the size of the timbers and stuff, eh? And they're 12 by 12 timbers. Some just massive bolts and hardware in there, and that's the main tub part of the crusher there. All the infrastructure and stuff for it. It's another set of stairs here, but they're all completely rotted out of here. So this crusher was over a hundred years since it's been put in here. And we'll have a little peek here through the bottom part of the crusher. And this is where the crushed material would have went down, down this chute. So there's some, uh, there's the other part of the crusher. You really can't see that much of it. You know, just can kind of see the infrastructure and stuff, but it doesn't really show you. It's difficult to see how it operated exactly, but uh, that's what this was. And look at the size of those, those big teeth there. Part of the crusher. This is a really big crusher. I remember reading about it. I was kind of surprised the first thing we found going underground was a big crusher. Those big wheels and stuff, so it goes back and forth on that rail. To lift stuff up. I don't know what it would lift up. The old heart disease without a doubt. Climbing up three stories on 100 year old timber. So you might have been for bringing in timbers or piping or whatever. That looks like a explosive box. So these are the bins that were on top of the crusher we were just at. So just huge, you know, the trains come right over top of here and dumped into there. There's a whole bunch of infrastructure and a whole bunch of buildings. It's all gone. You just see the concrete part, but we're going to hop down there and have a look at that. I don't know how big those are. They're probably 25 feet around each one of those circles. Well, let's go down and we'll have a look, closer look at it. Yeah. Hold on to you. Yeah. I would think so. Uh, 
After a few days of looking for an adit, we couldn't find any place to get in that wasn't flooded or just really steep and inaccessible. So we finally figured out we're just going to have to start draining this stuff. And which is we did. There was up to five feet of water in some places and we just started draining this mine to get into this. stained real bad you know this this brown this brown kind of a stain stuff is just oxidization and and uh, and the elements in here it's not what the rock would have looked like originally <laughs> we can kind of pull that away a little bit it's kind of just kind of a fresh break off of the, the ribs there a lot, a lot different that looks a lot different oh well, that's just that's um well that's just uh that's rock there yeah that's solid rock there. <laughs> this isn't, it looks like rock, but it's just kind of a, a little of a coating on it. There's solid rock in the back, so. And a lot of different types of, um, of uh, sediment here, you know. Some of it's really hard, you can just walk right on it. And this stuff's kind of interesting. I mean, it's, uh, I broke through here yesterday and it's almost dry on top, you know. It's not really mucky, but yeah, it looks pretty cool going through here a bit of an effort to get through all this stuff certainly something you very rare to see in mines i've never seen anything exactly like this and there's so many unique type of sediments and and formations and stuff as we're working down through here we got way back in here but um and there's lots of air circling through here but we couldn't get back up to the next level now you see a lot more of this material broke off in the back here or from the ribs, I'm sorry. All in there. That looks like it's pretty rich in copper or something, man. Right? Blue, that stuff is in there. Yeah. Now, it wasn't really deep, but there was a huge amount of muck in the section that we really tough to get through. Thought about a little bit more and decided, ah, it's probably safe enough. I kicked some of those timbers at the bottom and they weren't rotten. Have a look at this, isn't that cool? Look at the icicles hanging off of there. They're not icicles, but whatever. <laughs> Pretty neat, so. We're just making our way up here. There's about, oh, I don't know, four feet of water here. We just kind of kick this out of the way. And we'll make the water drain here pretty quick. Pretty soft. There we go. Down she goes. <laughs> Up to our knees here. And water. So this should drain down pretty quick. Not that deep anyhow. There's yeah. some powder boxes and a few oils and ends, eh? From the burlap sack. Be careful around here because oh, there's some powder in one of these. Mmm, look at that, isn't it? Look at that little 
Now that the water's dropping a little bit, the little formations are have kind of popped out of the water. These are pretty old ore chute gates, the type we see up at uh, Phoenix there. All riveted as you can see. I don't know what that says there, but I thought that was an empty box, but I stuck my finger on the bottom and it's not. It's sealed. So it could very well be a full case of explosive. Yeah, it's kind of a little unnerving hearing all this stuff crash down here, but it turned out it was nothing, I guess. So we're, uh, yeah, that's where we went. Just went up this ladder and up to that platform there. And unfortunately, it didn't go any further than that. So again, we got another big wet area here too. So I don't know how. Pretty extensive. Uh, looks like cool, they put that little log up there. There's a backstop, I guess, to hold the, something up there. Well, there's a, a raise going up there. <laughs> I don't think we'll be going up there. I'll just chase the water down here a little bit. It doesn't get pretty yellow, that stuff. You know, it, uh, it's hard to get off your hands. It'd be good to die or something. I don't really know what it is. I was kind of thought maybe there's some sulfides in it, which there may be, but it doesn't smell like sulfur at all. So, I don't know what that is. Not gonna touch it. You know, say about half the water's gone now, so it shouldn't take too much longer to drop it down a quite a bit more. And uh, I'm not really worried about any kind of a big dam all of a sudden flooding me out of here. Should be just fine. We're up to, uh, I guess up for a crotch in, in water. It's not too bad. Look how much it's dropped down. All of a sudden we've got this wide spot here. And um, there was a lot of water in this last part, so it's taken a long time for it to go down, so I didn't want to sit around here and wait forever, so it started going up. I mean, you know, big deal. I get chest waters up to here, so no big deal walking in a little bit of water. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of exciting. We've got this big Y here, and uh, we'll see what happens next. It looks like this dam was actually held back from this side. See, it's, it's dropping lower on that way, so we're thinking that's probably going to go to the pit. Pretty mucky in here. Glad we dropped the water some. Now we can see from the stain. Now that we've come back, we've dropped it about six inches. It's going to require a lot more digging. Shoots here, like you don't see anywhere else. I mean, just even the size of the timbers. Look at the trees, that must be two feet across. Not many places that have trees like that, but you know, we're on the west coast here, so so this guy here's uh, been plugged off. They don't smell bad or anything. You see where the kind of interesting the colors are. You see the less oxidized rocks, so it's been like this for a long time. Stepping right through to the floor, right on the floor here now. Yeah. So, oh, does not look pretty, eh? <laughs> oh, bless you. Yeah, pretty hard, too. Looks nastier than it is, actually, I think. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, it'd be cool to get up there. It's starting to be softer in a few feet. 
because it's kind of a hard ledge. It doesn't look quite as deep up there. Plus, time these things always seem a lot worse than they actually are. You think, oh shit. And once you get done, you think, oh, that wasn't bad. That's great looking stuff. Soft there. Oh, yeah. Doesn't even look very steep up that stilt, but no way of getting to the bottom of it, no. If that would just fall and break on its own, I wouldn't mind sneaking through there, but I don't want to piss around under there. Quick now. Just a huge pile of mud there holding it back. There's so much water streaming down this ore pass now that it's taking a lot of mud with it, so that's going to make it a lot easier. Very bit of work. We got her now. It's really kind of sticky stuff, eh? No, it's just screaming down through here. We don't want to get clogged, eh? There you see. What a pretty big oil, oh, look it's all caving in there. I think it's just gotta wash all that away. It's just gonna And uh, we see some graffiti in different places. Some guy's pretty good artist, they drawing different things and then they'll look, look like a, a deer or something there. There's a raise going up here. None of these ladders would be usable at all. You see it going way up there. Let's do another level up there, I would suppose. This is uh, obviously big ore chutes. And uh, we're definitely going to stick to the right hand rule here. See a pretty big train went down here. Last time we were at Antioch, we didn't really find much underground because those big dams, and now going crazy here. Oh, look at that polar gel. Look at that shape of that box, pretty nice, eh? Can get a year on that? No, we don't see one. Hmm. Beautiful box. Beautiful, got all kinds of all little raises going up and down, horse shoots. Going down to another level down there. We're heading down this little narrow little path. I don't know where it's going. The big reason I want to go down here is because oh, we've got the compressor line going down here. Looks like we're heading into a big ore chute. Yeah. Look at the icicles there on the hanging off the back. <laughs> well, they're not really icicles, but <laughs> look at the pick. Old miner's pick. dynamite in there look we're not going to touch that anymore yeah look at the nitroglycerin on the outside there. holy shit <laughs> it's just sweating on there waiting to blow up good thing we've stuck to our right hand rule because I'll tell you everything sure looks the same now I'm sure if I do what I always do I won't have a problem but uh, if I hadn't but I have a hard time getting out of here now I mean, we just, there's been so many junctions and stuff that we've been at. Don't really have any idea where, which way's out now. Huge. 
And here another, yeah, another four-way intersection. Wow. So we gotta put, well, well, we can see which way we came. <laughs> we'll just follow our footprints, no problem there. But another four-way intersection. I don't know how many we've seen so far. Oh, it's crazy. Huge mine. As long as you've been spent lost underground with Frank? Uh, a few hours. <laughs> a few hours, huh? Yeah. Well, Mining stuff in mines. All kinds of power passes going up. That would be a power disconnect switch for the train to shut the power off to a certain line, you'd disconnect it. Yeah, kind of an interesting color there. There's a junction going both ways. We're not far from the hoist level. The hoist level is just up there. So we just chop this out here. And we'll drain that. And we'll see if we can get up into this section that we haven't been into. Here's a ramp for one of our famous Granby cars. So the way that works, the Granby cars, they just ran up this ramp on one side and it tipped them down this war pass. Yeah, lots of little raises going up here. They all look pretty nasty though. Know. We came down here. And the idea is we're trying to get down to the main level, somewhere where it's not too nasty. And I figured out that wasn't that steep, even though he can't trust those ladders, but I got Looks like a lot of iron in it. There's no quartz here, the white you see is just calcium. Here is a bat monitor that we're putting in today. There's an organization called Bat Caver I work with. And uh, we put these monitors in, and the way that works is it, uh, any uh, ultrasonic frequencies that bats emit when they come in here, um, it'll log that for about, up to about six months. And the other little white thing is a moisture monitor. So the reason we picked this location is it's pretty noisy in this mine. You can see there's an outside exit way out there, so there's not too far to get out. Off of here, branches, different ways to get into here. And um, the hoist level goes straight down and straight up. So I was thinking, well, if a bat was, bats are looking for a good place to hibernate, I figured this might be a good location. And there's some pretty cool graffiti there. And I'll show it to you. I'm not really sure what it says exactly. It looks like, um, looks like a sailor and a woman. And it says Buck, Buck Molsom Porto, I don't know, BC, I'm not sure. There's, there's a guy that I think has done all this artwork. It's kind of similar style that you see in different places in the mine here. So it goes down pretty good. I'm sure don't get too close to it or we'll be having a real close look at the bottom. There it goes way down, eh? How far? That's pretty solid here. He's got in there. Looks like all the way down, huh? And looking up also. Long ways up, too. Some kind of a little shop in here. I thought there's anything in here now. Oh, there's a sign. See, safety first, eh? All persons using this grinder must. Yeah. So this is the, the main attic we get in. It's called Collapser, and it's not very far through to, uh, to this great big, uh, huge open stope here. Pretty cool. So I've climbed all the way up there and didn't go anywhere. So, yeah, there's the main tunnel that we came in from. And it's not very far through there, something like about 150 feet to the collapse you're at it. A fair bit of water here, like you can see we're up about five feet of water. We was here, we drained it out, so. Kevin's complaining he's getting wet. Yeah, quite a bit of water in this section here, so. As you can see, and we're just heading to the hoist level. Yeah. There's a sign there that says 385, I never saw it before, I'm not sure what it means. So we made it to the hoist level. They're looking to see if they can find any stolen light bulbs eh, from the famous Antioch. It's on the writing, it's on a cross. No. 
just kind of goes like that. Company probably gave up on trying to stop. Light bulbs still, eh? mm -hmm. That'd be 110 volts, you think? Yeah, it should be. Well, try it out, see if it works. should be 110. Be careful, uh, don't get too close to that lip because I was wondering if it was a little unstable. Bend the very edge of it there. Yeah. Might be a little unstable, so I wouldn't venture up too far into it. Yeah, this is a, one of many tunnels that comes out into the pit here. And uh, so. It connects up to places a little higher, so we want to try to get up there. And if you fell down there, you kind of wreck our trip. <laughs> I want to go up and have more shit here. A little seasoned on each and WD 40, I think. <laughs> Big shoot gates you got here, yeah, like three feet wide. You might need a little bit of heat on it. Ben's already up there. Frank's just heading up now. We'll get no easier than this, eh? No. Definitely does. Yeah, watch, watch the rocks though. Just boost it. What means rocks are going to come down? And we're out. This is a little raised here. It's not that far. Well, plugged off or sheet there. Eh? Got the sign that says notice. Incoming brakeman must stop train and inspect switch. All persons must put on and off their own lights. We're in all these little shacks. There's almost like lunchrooms, but I don't know. Maybe they had to separate for different trades. Everyone had their own little room or something. It's kind of weird, eh? You know, because there's benches on both walls, and they're all like whole bunch of whole rooms in here. One's maybe an outhouse. Look at this. So you can see that the red light. For the trains, I've slipped slip that in. And then this is a green light. So this had a little holder like we've seen, and then they stick green or red in there so the trains know whether they can go in there or not. If they want to shut down a track or something, they just put it right in there and then the train can't go past there. What Frank means by not very steep is that it's less than 90 degrees. Buy me. I think I'll leave it for today. <laughs> there. Okay. Better. So after a second trip to Antioch, we uh, drained all the water out of there and we got to this main hoist level. So we started to realize the only way we were actually going to get down to the other levels was down straight down this shaft. It's, uh, it's kind of a bit confusing because it says 385 on the top and we know that the main level was the 150. 
But uh, we went down here and we used 400 feet of rope to go straight down. So instead of going right down the hoist, we uh, we went down the manway, which where, where the ladders are beside it. Uh, so they look pretty good starting to go down, but about halfway down the ladders just completely rotted and disappeared, and we just had to crawl straight down. It was pretty tough because uh, lots of water dripping down there, and uh, there's uh, the mineralization uh, formed big chunks that were falling down there, really heavy. Um, so it was, it was kind of pretty challenging to go down there. So you can see these big icicles or whatever, stalactites, I guess, and uh, they've kind of formed into the wood. Just beautiful, actually, formations and stuff, but uh, just nasty going down there. So, um, yeah, we made it down. It, it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of energy. It's really tight in there, wet, and, uh, and you had to pull yourself straight up in places where there was no ladders, but we made it to the bottom. And he's just going straight down the, the manway. So we're hoping we get to the end soon. Here we've arrived, and this, uh, we believe this is the 185 level, which is the, the lowest main hall level in the mine. So we ran up. This is way up. Pretty tough. We're about 400 feet, and we'll come straight down. About half of it, no ladders at all, just straight down. We might as well have went down the shaft for all the difference it made. Huh. Yeah, so we've got uh, three tunnels going in all different directions here. Theoretically, if we went up the hill, it would be less water, because... I don't know, we'll see. We'll walk around, we'll have a look and see what we can find. There's a big bin there, that's an old bin, eh? Looks all riveted, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Man, this is, so this is where all the water comes streaming down from the top level of the mine. And they loaded up here onto them trains and away she went. So we'll see how far we can get. Yep, lots of water here. Oh, there's a big cable. Oh, the airlines, eh? Oh, well, there's a tunnel that goes the other way. Some kind of theoretically, if we head the right direction, we'd be getting shallower. We're not even sure what direction that would be. That we've reached a, a kind of a junction here, so that's getting shallower. There's only about three feet of water here. And there's a junction, there's a railway going that way, and there's one going this way. We've got to go this way because the water's getting way shallower here. We're heading uphill. There we go. So there's only two feet of water here. <laughs> oh, oh, make sure it doesn't fall on my head. <laughs> yeah. Piece of the glass right back in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sign. I don't know if I really want to get too much closer. Sweating on it. So I don't think I got a chance going around that. Powder, no open lights, danger. Looks like we're under a big deposit here. We've got a big roll of horseshoes here. And one, two, three, four, five, I can see, two behind us. Oh, big ore sheets too. Massive boulders. Oh, there's big tracks here. Look at the rail's still here. Looks like 36 inch track. This branch ends at this massive cavern. Can't see nothing really in here. It's just black up there. Massive up there. It goes up far, far as we can see. It's just black. Can't see anything up there. Polar, Forsyth Junction, CIL. This is one of the nicest. James, on this one, of the nicest dive my box I've ever seen. And this actually where it's going to stay. <laughs> it would not be fun getting this out of here. Beautiful. And keep it dry as possible. There we go. Thank you. So we're hoping this isn't too deep now because when we went up to the end of the mine, we had to let quite a bit of water down. So we're kind of worried we might be swimming at the end here. But Worse with us falling into fucking these deep holes. Well, it's a lot better falling into the water than it is uh, falling down the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> the water supports you a lot better than air. I did better that 
Well, nice thing our equipment's nice and clean, too. <laughs> yeah, we can go to the right to begin with, and then we'll come back and go to this other branch. Stella tights. Stella tights? I remember yeah. that one with Stella mites. Stella mites are from the floor. The way you remember it is Stella tights. They're holding on tight. Stella mites might reach the ceiling. <laughs> Massive bins, eh? There's a man with three lights. I told him we need to bring three lights. We're not supposed to have them all at the same time. You're supposed to save them in case your light goes out, Rob. <laughs> it's interesting to see the stuff on top in different, different formations. Looks like roots in there. Crazy. Another world down here. Yeah. The mud really changes from different areas. And it's not all the same. It's like going through a sewer or something, but it smells way nicer. Well, there's a little place we can have a shower. If we're getting too hot. <laughs> Stalamite, stalatites. Mineralized stalatites. I want to film it if a ladder rung breaks and you end up in the mud. <laughs> Took a long time to drain everything, so it was pretty easy once you get that done. Oh, here comes the paparazzi. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think burlap is all that durable, but that's a pretty, pretty nice bag. It's like a Gucci, uh, yeah. retro Gucci, hey? So this is a pretty big railway. This is about, it must be just about three feet, eh? About 36 gauge. 36 inches, so it's a big railway. The main line is bigger, but it's a big it's a big uh, rail for inside a mine. There, you can see the handle. There's the handle for this ore gate still in there. See, that's the guy would have said, and you just pull the handle down, that opens the gate. Usually, you don't see them. They take those those handles off and they put it on the next. Oh, right one that they're there. using, and sometimes you even take the whole gate off. So that's a very old gate, it's all riveted. Um, arc welding uh, isn't, wasn't common until about 1920. So this is a pretty old gate. So they usually use 40%, that's the most common thing. So that means 40% nitroglycerin, which is stronger and weaker stuff. Yeah, this is 40%, see, this is 40% strength. Oh, okay. There's 40 and 60. How's it look, is it soft in there, Rob? Hard as a rock. <laughs> Come on in, the water's fine. It's like a slimy suction. <laughs> yeah. Make her Kevin? Yeah, I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a climb, eh? You don't see many 50-some-year-olds up there. That's me and you. Yeah. And you're at the top. <laughs> the 50. There's some steep areas. Good place to fly the drone from. Yeah. Okay. Good you. So we have the drone with us again. And what we want to do is right below us there, see that hole as you just come into there? That's where we want to go, is straight down into that hole. So the cool thing about having the drone is we can kind of scope out the best path. And what we did is to the very right of the screen, um, you know, there's quite a few holes in this whole area here. Top of a stope that's caved in. So, all right, so uh, time to put the toy away. And uh, we're going to uh, hop uh, along that ledge there. And we're going to go down the cliff and we're going to head into that whole big hole just below us. We got our ropes and our climbing gear, and we're going to head over this cliff and see if we can get into that hole. So we're going to head down into there. There he is onto the ledge. Well, they found another hole, anyways, and they're going to go check it out.
It goes down, but it doesn't seem to be real steep, so I don't think I need a rope for this part. I don't think I'm going to have to do you much good if anything fell over there. Big deal. It just goes to the shooting part, but it could be sold on our hip check. Hopefully one day we'll be able to come back with some expert rock climbers and find the few last remaining secrets of Antioch. Thanks for watching.